What's up, everybody? It's Keith Keith from KeithKeith.com. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Mix. Uh, on today's episode, we have somebody that we had here uh, a while ago, and I had to get him back. Um, and I've been meaning to do this interview with him for a while. Um, but then it really got heightened because I kept seeing something um, from a lot of people who I work with and a lot of people who I talk to. So that let me know he was making a lot of noise. And I said, well, we're going to have to talk about this. So yet again, here we are. This is Gabe from uh, the Legions. So Gabe, introduce yourself to the uh, five people who don't know you. <laughs> oh, right on, man. I'm happy to, uh, happy to be here. Thank you for having me having me on. As you know, I'm a, a fan of, of you and keep these movements. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess to give a little background on, on kind of who I am. I know last time I was on, I gave kind of like the back back story. So I won't go too deep into that, but maybe I'll give um, sort of the more recent story, which is basically, you know, been, been producing and engineering for a long time, um, but started selling beats online in about 2014, I think. I think it's been about four years. Um, feels like longer, but um, that really changed everything for me where I'd already been making a living in music and, um, you know, and had a team, had a studio and stuff like that. But it, just open my eyes up to the whole world of entrepreneurship and marketing. Um, we've grown, you know, exponentially, literally, you know, um, been able to double our revenue every year since 2014. If we can do that this year, by the way, that would be a big feat because that becomes a bigger, bigger feat. Um, but, you know, our team has grown, our, our revenue has grown, our expenses have grown. Um, you know, everything we're doing uh, has been growing really quickly. I'm, you know, super grateful to be in that position. It's super exciting. Uh, honestly, it can be stressful at times. There's always, you know, the good that goes with the bad. Um, so we could, there's, there's a ton there to unpack. So um, we could talk about any, any one of those pieces for a while. But basically, um, you know, I've been lucky enough that we've really grown quickly. And um, so that's, that's Legion Beats. And then recently, um, because I love this game so much of the, of the producer part, the music part, but also the entrepreneur part, entre, that's a hard word to say, entrepreneur part um, and the marketing piece. We launched a company called Midi Money, which is actually where we teach other producers how to do what we're doing. So that's kind of a quick overview. Um, we could dive deeper into any one of those things. Yeah, and for anybody who wants to see the full in-depth inter uh, interview, but introduction as well as Gabe, I can link the old video in the description below. So now let's talk about this real quick. So you, uh, you as uh, you and Legion Beast. Um, you, you have been able to grow as a successful company in this industry. And um, you've been here throughout a lot of changes. We know that the industry has been changing and things aren't necessarily the way how they used to be. Um, even from, from a marketing standpoint, of course, but from just a, a recording standpoint with new software, new gear, uh, the amount of uh, material and uh, recordings that people are releasing at one time and you know um, through everything that you've been through and of course you have been fortunate to work with a lot of artists especially out in the area that you are and a lot of companies as well out of all the companies and artists that you were able to work with what would you say might be one of the most crucial or profound lessons that you've kind of learned throughout your journey in this industry? Well, I can say, yeah, there's a lot there. I can say as far as artists that I've worked with, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to work with some big names with, you know, guys like Kendrick Lamar and um, James and G-Eazy and uh, Tech 9 and, you know, a lot of, a lot of big names. Um, but one guy that I've really worked with closely uh, is Mr. Fab, who's an artist, um, you know, if you're from the Bay Area, you definitely know him. Um, and if you're outside the Bay Area, there's a pretty good chance you know him. Super talented artist, amazing freestyler, um, you know, great songwriter, um, and great entrepreneur as well. And so he's somebody that I work with really closely. And um, I think the question that you asked is like, what are some lessons I've learned from, from working with some of these guys? And the thing that I've seen from him is, is two things. From the artist side, um, the fact that, I mean, he's, he lives a great life. Like he's got two Maseratis, you know, he travels the world, but he's, he's also like beloved. Like people love the dude. He's a great guy. People like him. Um, he gets to like, you know, travel the world and, and make music. So he's able to do that. And then and the lesson on my end as a producer is that um, he's able to do that without a major label. He's actually, there's a whole story, but he was signed to Atlantic Records. There was a bidding war back in the, uh, back in like 2006, 2007, he got signed. Um, it ended up not working out with the label. 
Um, but instead of just kind of that being the end of his story, which is common for artists, um, he's a resourceful dude, smart dude, talented dude. And so he came to work with us here at the studio um, and he released his next album, which is called Son of a Pimp 2. Um, and on that album was these guys like Kendrick Lamar and, and, and 2 Chains and Wiz Khalifa and Easy and all these, all these big artists, right? Um, and the success of that really opened my eyes to like, holy shit, like we have the tools and the resources to be successful, just like these guys on the labels, without needing that huge budget. We can mix and master and make it sound great. We have tools for promotion and marketing. Um, we have the music production. We have all the pieces at our fingertips right here. Um, and so that was really a profound experience for me to realize we can do this. We can help other artists do this as well. Yeah, you know what? I, I think what you said was really good because even on today, I have been speaking with a multiple number of artists and trying to help them see the differences, but more so the, sim the similarities uh, in the successful artists and producers now. Um, and and how similar they are and some of the practices that we do or the levels that which we do is the same exact things that the successful ones and the ones who have accomplished a little bit more than us actually do it's the same exact things so i think that was really good that you pointed that out because a lot of artists and producers they think like it's a secret formula or it's uh some other world that you have to tap into in order to break through but really it is just the practices that we do now um but it's just the dedication and time and of course you know who you know here and there may definitely help but it's definitely the dedication and the time because the practices actually work yes so let's jump into something real quick let's jump into the thing that sped me up to talk to you. Um, so I, I work with a lot of artists and I have, I'm in a bunch of groups and communities as well that uh, one community I'm in actually has uh, over 16,000 artists in it. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> and I kind of swindled my way to uh, a moderating position in this community. I don't even know how, but anyway. Okay. That's okay. But, but through a lot of the artists, what they're doing is sharing this advertisement. And okay. the advertisement that they keep sharing is to win this feature with Chris Brown. So can you tell me what is what's really what's going on? What's going on with this? Because it, it's 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 surprising me a lot. And then I, and I and I go like, yo, I, I know that guy. They'd be like, no, you don't. I'd be like, okay, cool. So can you explain to them? First of all, that I know you. Second of all, can you explain to us what is this feature? What what's going on with this? Yeah, sure. So basically, what we're doing is um, this has sort of become a continuation of something that we're trying to make bigger and bigger every year. Um, we've done a contest for the last three years in a row. Um, the first year, it was all about music. Uh, last year, we did uh, a Snoop verse and a bunch of other stuff. This year, we're doing a contest to get, yes, a Chris Brown feature, uh, free beats for life, free promo for life, uh, mixing and mastering. All Basically, we put together, like, like I was talking about with Mr. Fab, what we realized is that we have all these resources for artists to be successful. So let's put together a package that could that could really move the needle and, and, and create a significant impact for an artist's life. Um, and so that's the value that we always want to do. And so um, with this contest, that's what we're doing. You know, we were able to um, secure the rights to a licensed feature um, and, and we kind of bundled it with all those other things. And um, kind of what we did with the contest is we created it in a format to that um, it's expensive for us, right? To put all this stuff together and to create all these prizes and all that stuff. Um, but the way that we get paid back is that we actually incentivize people who enter the contest to encourage other people to enter the contest. Um, and really the contest is based off of them bringing in other people. So by doing that, we're, we're making our lead generation um, double, right? It becomes this compounding thing where you know, now it's on your radar, right? It's on other artists' radar because the way that you win this contest is by sharing that link. So um, I think that's a good lesson for anybody, whether if you're a producer or an artist, is um, everybody wants to know what's in it for them. And that's not a, a selfish thing. That's just, it's just human, just sure. who we are, right? Um, so when you're putting together an offer or a contest or something, um, you want to think about how can you make it valuable to them to help you, 
right? So for us, we figured out a way, okay, we can incentivize other people to bring us more leads um, by giving them all this. Money. So that's kind of the, the story. So, so let me ask you a technical question because when we, when we did the interview the last time, it was a good interview, but then afterwards we were on for probably like an hour or more just talking about all of these other technical things. So I, 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 that. The after party. I, I know I can ask you. So, so how hard is it for you um, to secure these licenses for, from these major artists? Yeah, it become, it's all about networking for this type of thing. It's, it's knowing the right people. That's really what it comes down to. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> there's not much more to it. It's, it's all about just knowing the right people. Um, it's a fairly common practice that artists do license features, um, but it's not so common. Like, you know, producers license their beats. That's like literally you can't look anywhere and not see that. Um, and it is a fairly common practice that artists do that as well. It's just... Um, you have to know the right people. That's that's really all it comes down to. Uh, all right, cool. All right, so let me ask you another question. So the industry has been changing. I alluded to that a little bit earlier. Um, and the way in which we go about handling things on um, the back end of music, as far as recording, mixing, mastering, releasing music, you know, before the traditional albums were out, now it's kind of like EPs or it's not EPs at all. Everyone's dropping singles and kind of um, now, if you wait too long to drop your next piece of music, you may just very well be forgotten. Um, everything's free, everything's accessible, uh, everything's at your fingertips now um, with all the streaming platforms as well. By the, by the industry changing in the way that it has been changing, uh, what are some changes that you as a business had to actually make to accommodate these changes? Yeah, so for me, you know, as a producer, it's going to be slightly different than an artist, but really my job as a producer, our job is to provide the tools and the resources and everything that those artists need, right? So if the artists need to be continually putting out music, which is true, I mean, they need to be, like, if you're an artist, you need to be dropping a song at least once a month. And that's that's really a minimum, you know, really to be, if possible, once a month. I mean, there's people doing it more often than that, right? Um, just like you said, because um, attention is at such a high premium. That's that's what everybody's fighting for, right, is attention. And so just like you said, if you're not continually putting out content, people are going to forget about you. And so from my perspective, that means I need to help artists do that. So um, it becomes about making it um, more accessible for them. So, for example, um, one thing that we do is we have a membership. So instead of saying, okay, every time you want to buy a beat, you have to come and pay you know, 30 bucks for a basic license or 200 bucks for an unlimited license or, or $2,000 for an exclusive license or, or anywhere in between. Um, it's, we have a, a membership program where you pay a monthly, a monthly fee. And then um, depending on what level you sign up for, you get all the beats you need. You get your songs mixing and mixed and mastered. You get help with promotion. You get um, education about how to promote and, 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 and network and spread your music. And um, so that's been a big game changer for us is, focusing on getting people to be a part of our community, part, part of our membership, um, because we can provide all of that for an artist so that they can actually continually release music, continually release content, um, have that content actually be seen by people because we're helping them with the promotion side of it. Um, so to me, it's just watching the industry, seeing what um, our customers need, what our clients need, what our people need, and then making it as easy for them as we can. So, so what do you, what do you think um, what do you think is going to happen in the future regarding the music industry? Like, because now we are releasing music at such a rapid pace that, like you said, if you're not at least releasing a song a month, you know, then you're kind of late to the party. Uh, where do you think it's going next? I mean, we're, it's getting down to releasing songs all the time. If anybody follows Gary V, he tells people, you know, lock yourself in and re uh, release the song every single day. Like, do you think it's going to get to that point? Or do you think, like, music, the music industry will kind of be, like, oversaturated in a sense? Or is it encouraging our 
short term attention span, you know, that we may have because as soon as we listen to your project, it's like I can't even afford to listen to it twice because I'm moving on to something new. So where do you think that uh, the music industry is going to at the pace it is now? Yeah, so I think, like you said, for sure, it's all about continually putting out content. We have shorter attention spans than ever. I don't see why that trend would go start going the other direction, right? Um, so I think it becomes more about continually putting out content, and it doesn't have, to, it shouldn't actually only just be putting out music. It shouldn't, you shouldn't only be focusing on putting out songs. People are, I shouldn't say less interested, but they're not just interested in music. They're interested in who and who you are, whether if you're an artist or a producer. Um, so the content that you're putting out should be, shouldn't just be music. It should be, you know, what's your day looking like today? What, you know, what are your thoughts on these different things? What kind of, you know, what's your brand about? Meaning, um, and when I say brand, sometimes people think like, oh, what's your logo and colors and fonts? Like that's a piece of it, but really is what's the feeling that people get when they interact with you? So again, whether you're a producer or an artist, what's that feeling they get? So if your message is about, um, you know, positivity or, or, or not, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, um, people come to you because they want that feeling. So you can give them that feeling through your music. You can give them that feeling through on your Instagram story, showing them what you're doing through your day. You can give that through them to them through a little bit more produced version of that on YouTube or IGTV or on Facebook. Um, you can do that through a long text post that you're doing, you know, on any of those social media platforms. And so to me, the direction that producers and artists and anybody in music and and really everybody should be going is you know, to put out more content, but also not just music, more um, sort of information and lifestyle and figure out a system where you can repurpose your content to where it's going to go. So you mentioned Gary Vee, right? He's a king of this, right? Is repurposing that content so that it, it works on all these different platforms, um, but in a way that seems new to those platforms, right? So you can't just shoot a video and then put it everywhere in the same form. It's not going to look right if you shoot a YouTube video and then just cut 15 seconds of it and put it in an IG story, but take that YouTube video and, and create a bunch of content out of it. Take a quote from it and make that a quote card that you post on Instagram and that you post on uh, Facebook. Take the con, get that uh, video transcribed and turn that into an email uh, blast that you send out. Um, take that transcription and put it as, you know, on Instagram where it's like a post of you, like you could be like, you see this sometimes, Gary Vee does these, um, some other guys use the words, it sort of looks like they're on their phone thinking and they have this whole post of information that looks like they just sat there and wrote it out. It's actually a repurposed transcribed video from two months ago and it's creating this, um, uh, this content factory, right? That's, that's what people need to be thinking about is creating this content factory um, so that you can have content that's, that literally goes out every day, um, but it's in some way automa you know, automated and systemized so that you can have your pillar content, that video or whatever, and it kind of goes out to everyone, whether if it's a song, whether if it's information, whether if it's lifestyle, um, whatever you're talking about, you know, kind of getting it out there and being top of mind so that you are keeping your attention. Yeah, that's, uh, that was very good in what you said about the repurposing content. And I think that this is a very good place that we can kind of hang our heads for a second because one of the most common themes that amongst a lot of artists and amongst a lot of producers, which is a struggle to talk to, the, talk to them about, is that they're so um, tunnel vision minded about being a artist only or being a producer only so the idea to repurpose my content which is their music they don't kind of even think of it that way they just kind of see you know the same traditional way how music has always been not necessarily understanding how uh the changes in the social world which is where everything lives and dies on right now uh, how it actually is right now and they don't understand how to repurpose their music because they don't see their music as content in other words like value that could be useful for somebody else other than them making music so I think it was very good that how you uh laid out some strategies because a lot of artists they actually are still thinking like you know why isn't my single that I just posted on SoundCloud doing numbers. Right. Or, you know, it, and and it's, it's more to that. It's, it's, it's much more to just releasing music. 
but do you have the other supporting factors around your music to complement the actual music that you put out? Um, and I don't think a lot of artists and producers actually view themselves as a brand still. And I think that was very good about what you said. It's all about how uh, someone you feel when you leave them. You know, it's all about that mantra that you have behind your actual business and the meaning and the motive to why you actually do what you do. And is that actually conveyed to the person you are working with? And they just kind of still see themselves as a artist or a producer just releasing things. And then people kind of should, people, people should just uh, jump to their products and jump to their music just because they are who they are, but they don't understand the content factor in that. So is there other ways? How, okay, let me ask you this. How does a artist or a producer make their self and their content valuable? Like how can they make that convincing enough to actually have somebody want to be a part of them and what they have going on? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question because that is the key, right? It's, it's not just about putting whatever out there. It's, again, it's that psychology of what's in it for me. So you have to think about whoever's your audience, what, what do they want to hear? Um, and a lot of times that takes some trial and error where, you know, you have to just put yourself out there and hop on Instagram stories and start talking. Um, and what you'll start to see is what are the topics, what are the types of things that people are responding to? And, and what will happen is you'll find your voice. And you'll find your audience at the same time because they're going to be attracted to, oh, okay, this person is starting to talk about these certain topics. Maybe it's, it doesn't matter what, it could be sports, it could be, you know, drugs, it could be your music. It, be, it really doesn't matter. You know, it's finding your niche, finding your lane so that when people want that feeling or they want to hear about that thing, um, they come to you, right? So, um, so, it, so it becomes about finding what that thing is for you and then creating content around that. And it just takes trial and error. And you put yourself out there and just put out a bunch of content. And at first it is, it might feel kind of random when you're trying different stuff, but make sure it's true to you, at least in some kind of way. It's gotta be some piece of you, otherwise you're not gonna be able to maintain it, right? And then just, and you'll, and you'll start to see what you like to talk about, the type of content that people react to, um, that your audience specifically actually enjoys and gets value out of, and then keep creating more of that. So to me, it's more about trial and error. Um, but just always have that in mind that the purpose of this is to create value and then get the uh, feedback from them, from your audience of like, okay, this is what they're, this is what I'm getting likes and comments and, and messages back saying, oh, I really related to that. I, you know, that was valuable to me. Um, and then kind of go forward from there. Yeah, and <laughs> you said something that I don't think a lot of people understand. Uh, and you just spoke about, you know, asking and talking and just being personal and just being a person. And sometimes a lot of people, they just try to jump to this corporate or branding scheme to where they're the person behind a, a stage or a person behind the curtains. Like you don't really know who's talking to you. You just know it's them. You know, but, and I try to tell people that uh, I found the most success probably within the last three months of my business, literally not even focused on releasing music so much or anything like that, but literally just talking to people. I mean, just genuinely talking to people and just talking to them about their music and not necessarily trying to get a dollar out of them, not trying to push a link on you or nothing, just genuinely talking to them. And then later they end up becoming fans. And I keep trying to tell these other artists and producers to do the same thing because it's easier to market to somebody. It's easier to work with somebody who already know you and who trusts you versus trying to convince somebody who doesn't know you from a can of paint to actually support you. So I don't think they actually understand the uh, importance of being personal, just being a person and actually just speaking to people and just asking them like, yo, what do you need? What can I help you with? And literally whatever their answer is, that's your answer. You know, that's the things that, those are the things that you need to be paying attention to because all the business is supplying a need for somebody who needs, who has a need. And if they're not telling you exactly what they need, then you don't know what to supply them with. So I, you said you said a lot of good stuff in there. I just wanted for everybody to actually understand that what you said because they don't and and 
or the way I'm talking, it grinds my gears hearing about this because they don't understand the importance of like really networking. And a lot of times they think that networking is just like, yo, bro, check out my link or yo, bro, let's just connect. Like, no, like, like, let's really talk about, let's really talk about something. Let's find the common denominator that bridges us together. And if I can really help you in that area, guess what we just did? We just networked, we just really connected. And I don't think a lot of artists and producers, especially in this age, cause a lot of them are like real young, you know, a lot, a lot of them are, got, they, they, they grew up in the digital age, you know, uh, social media and all of that. So they, their idea of, um, of kind of success in this industry is a little bit differently than those who are so much used to uh, working with one person and you only have one customer and you know, you know what it's like to lose that one customer. Therefore, it forces you to to treat everyone right and to value every single person that you work with like their goal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, could you agree more for sure? And do you do you? I know y'all work with a lot of well known names. Um, do do you? I'm gonna put you on the spot for this. Do you um, <laughs> do you tend to? Are your services available for even those well-known people as well as the artists, the independent artists that are still coming up? Or do you have like specific um, packages, or do you have specific uh, things that you would do for one versus the other? Yeah. So really, you know, again, like our whole here's how I look at it is like, we try to bridge those gaps. Right. So like, we're lucky enough to be in a position where we are able to work with some of these guys that are on major labels and some of these guys that have a lot of notoriety. And so basically what we do is we try to take, okay, this is how I'm working with this person. This is, these are the services we're providing. We're providing them. With, we're doing mixing and mastering. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we're helping them with the marketing. And mm -hmm. so we try to use that uh, as our testing ground really are these bigger artists and be like, okay, cool, here's, here's what we did. We did everything we could to help this artist as much as we can. Now, how can we figure out how to create or how to um, make, create a system so that we make that available to the independent artist um, on a bigger scale and at an affordable price? So, so, it's, so it's the same thing. Um, it's more for us figuring out how to convert it. We're like, how can we take like what we did for this artist, maybe a big name artist, and then how can we provide that same um, result to an independent artist without having to charge them the same thing that we charge the big artists? You know, right. so that's kind of how we look at it. All right. So what are what are some other things that the Legion are up to nowadays? What are some new ventures that you all are on or some new... I was just talking to uh, AD and he said that he... Uh, I think he said he saw you not too long ago. Yeah, that yeah. was, I got to meet him. You know, that's a guy who, you know, I'd say as far as um, influences for me, uh, other people in this space, like the producer, entrepreneur, you know, selling meats online game. To me, Anno Domini is, is the guy. He's the guy from when I started that I always modeled after the most. He was the number one guy as far as the, the path that I wanted to take. And so um, it really meant a lot that recently I actually started, you know, talking to him a little more one-on-one -on -one and then actually got to meet him in person. Um, when I was down in LA a few weeks ago. Um, and not only that, but we're going to be collaborating on some projects coming up. I can't give you too many details, <laughs> yet, but, uh, but we are actually going to be working together. And, and to me, honestly, it's like such an honor to be like, wow, like this guy who like really, um, like I said, has been a huge influence for me um, now wants to work with me, you know, and a lot of that comes from literally just modeling after, which is a nice way of saying copying the shit that he's been doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and obviously putting our own twist on it and, and, and stuff like that, but being heavily influenced by him um, to get that kind of recognition of like, okay, he sees we're doing something with it and um, there's value to him to work with us now. Like that means a lot to me. And so um, that's been really cool. And, and that's, you know, you asked about, you know, next chapters and stuff, that's a big one. And, and working with other producers like yourself and, um, you know, I've been working with Alexander. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but super yeah. dope producer from out in the UK. He was actually down in LA at the same time. So we were all, we were all working together um, and kind of networking with all the guys that kind of the, at the top of our industry, of our space and seeing what we can do to, to, to move the whole uh, industry forward and to, to create, you know, 
whatever we thought were the limits before, let, let's make that higher. You know, um, I know for me, like, again, going back to Anno Domini, like when he would talk about revenue numbers, when you talk about, you know, the, the size of his email list, to me, it would blow my mind. Like, oh, I, I didn't know that that was possible in our industry. And now we've accomplished some of those things. You know, we've hit some, I'm not, yeah. we're not at his level, but some of the <laughs> that he has talked about were, you know, he's talked about these, these you know, big launches and, you know, six figure launch, you know, five figure launches, sorry, working on the six figure one, but five figure launches and stuff like that. Um, that because we saw that it was possible because he did it, now we can able to do it. And so we want to mm -hmm. take that model to the other producers out there as well of like, hey, you know, we want to be the first producer to do a six figure launch. That is, that is something that we're, we're trying to do. Um, you know, and, and hopefully by us doing that, we're like, let's say we accomplished that for the, for the producers just starting out to be holy shit, like these guys made a hundred thousand dollars in a week selling beats. Like I didn't know that was possible, but now once you have that belief, all of a sudden it becomes possible for you and, and it, yeah. Um, yeah, it becomes possible. Um, so that's, that's, that's where we're at now is really trying to push the boundaries um, of what is possible in our yeah, he's he's definitely a calculated guy. He's like he, he's 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 like definitely like one of those old mobsters or gangsters in movies who walk slow and talk soft. But you know, you know he's bringing destruction. That's definitely him. <laughs> for absolutely, sure. absolutely, no, absolutely. That's yeah. You're talking about Anna Domini. Like that's absolutely very uh, very deliberate, very smart. Um, and yeah, and and like I said, like when I heard you know a few years ago, he said he did ten thousand dollars you know, in his uh, Black Friday launch. And I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. You know, and then we did $10,000, you know, and then he shared the next number, you know, and last year we did $64,000 in our Black Friday launch. And it's like, okay, you know, so it's so it's always, um, again, seeing like when somebody else does it, then it's like, okay, cool, that's possible. Now I can do it. Um, and I now, now we're in a position where we can actually, um, you know, again, team up with all the top guys and, and push those boundaries. Even more. So that, that's super exciting for me. I'm, I, can't, I can't wait till y'all put on a conference. That's what I can't wait. wait. We, we might, we actually, you know, it's funny. A few years ago, we, we actually used to do a conference. It was really um, one of my partners, Mario Flores, who, who was the lead on that, but I was the spokesperson and, and did do it called, it was called the Bay Area Producer Conference. Um, but we haven't done it in a few years, so that might come back um, or some other version of it. But yeah, you're right. We, we've got we've got some things in the work with MIDI money, which I mentioned briefly at the beginning. Um, that's going to be something that I think is going to be hopefully a, um, a huge opportunity for all of the upcoming producers to learn, you know, what we're doing and to provide the tools and resources that they need in order to actually make a living and 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 actually you know, start. Um, scale and grow their own six-figure um, beat selling business. So that's that's right. another whole other thing. And that'll be live events, you know, membership. We've got all that stuff, you know, in the works. It's, it's a little ways off, but um, but that's definitely in the works. Man, that's what's up, man. I'm glad to hear it, man. I'm glad that you were able to jump on. I'm glad that you had the time, even though the technical difficulties, whenever you try to do an interview, there's always something that pops up. Yeah. Um, for everybody who wants to follow you and find out where you are, where can they follow you at? Yeah, for sure. So if you're um, an artist and you want to work with us, um, the front of our funnel is always legionbeats.com slash free. Right now, that's going to redirect to the contest we're running. So um, if you want to win a Chris Brown feature, free beats for life, promo, mixing and mastering, everything that you need for success, it's free to enter. You get 10 free beats just for entering. Um, go to legionbeats.com slash free. If you're seeing this video in two or three years from now, go to legionbeats.com slash free. We'll have something great for the end. Um, that's always the front of our funnel. If you are a producer and you're interested in learning more about how to make a living selling beats, um, go to midimoney.com um, and, uh, and you can learn more about that. Cool. And I will make sure that all the links are in the description below. Um, and... If y'all need anything, this is the guy y'all need to go talk to. This is the man y'all need to go talk to. He has a team and he knows what he's talking about, as you heard. And definitely you can go get, yeah, he got to see, he got the team uh, that claims they do all the work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly i know i know we're wrapping things up but we, we should do a whole series of these because just talking about working with a team honestly that is i could talk for hours about that's a whole new thing but 
Anyway, sorry. I, I know we're wrapping it up. We can, we can <laughs> do another one of these because there's probably like 10 topics we could go to. Yeah, there's, there's, there's probably a, a, a whole book we can kind of do that we probably should do, we're that probably. we probably will do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we definitely can set that up for sure. All right, everybody. Once again, I am Keith Keys. This is Gabe. And I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode on Behind the Mix. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can either visit me at KeithKeys.com or you can visit Gabe at Legion Beats, the Legion Beats.com. I'll say yeah. it right. Yes, you know, thank you so much for having me on. You know, I'm a fan of you and your movement, the Keith Keys movement. So, man, uh, let's, let's do another one. Let's not wait two years to do another one. No, nah, maybe. No, nah, no. Nah, matter of fact, we're going to have another one for y'all soon. Definitely. Maybe we can get UNAD on here and we all can just wrap it up for sure. Talk for sure. Yeah, man. So if y'all want to see another video with Gabe, in the description below, in the comment section, say we want Gabe. All right? Say we want Gabe. That's what I need y'all to do. All right, y'all. We're out.